There we go. That is good. Okay. So you've already spoken about that. So I'm I'm um, calling in from Nurov, which is the School of Technology and Digital Media. So this is quite relevant, relevant for us. And the the key theme I want to talk about is technology adapters, which I think is what we all have been versus being born digital. And some of you might recognize this interesting contraption here. It is actually a TV cabinet. I'm not sure anyone has TV cabinets anymore, but all the youngsters that we are dealing with now in our classes, unless you're dealing with slightly older folks, are folks from the matrix who've been basically born and bred and connected. Uh, you can have a look at folks with their children with um, iPads and iPhones right now. So this is literally a bassinet with a baby looking at a <laughs> an iPad. If one looks at this type of technology, camcorders, CD players, these were all brand new in our day and have now absolutely vanished our, and, and are in one particular technology platform vis-a-vis -a, -vis a phone. So if you had to show some of these to folks, to children and ask them to type a number on that Nokia phone, they would struggle at doing it. When we grew up as well, we had hoverboards. This was our vision of the future in the 90s. It hasn't come to pass, but this is the landscape that we find a lot of young folks coming into our schools. They've, how do you compete with this? It's Fortnite, it's Roblox, it's a VR, AI, metaverse, multiverse, whatever you think about. They have been working and playing with these new technologies for the for the past five years, basically. So a lot of us, I'm not sure, Phil, if you've ever played Roblox or if you've ever played uh, Fortnite, but these programs have such intense competition, have such intense rules, have a whole range of different ways that you engage with the technology, that you engage with one another, that for us who are totally unconnected to this world, it's very difficult for us to be subject matter experts in digital marketing and digital when we are absolutely in the stone age compared to the youngsters coming up. They've also got many, 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 many hours of practice um, on us <laughs> based um, on the time they spend on their screens. Just to make you all feel old again, this is now a vintage phone. So, um, yeah. So one of the things I've had to look at is integrating this new media landscape into the curriculum that we that we work on. And I'm not sure how many of you have worked on Discord or have been trained on Discord, but a lot of students have an implicit knowledge of how Discord works because of all of the different technologies and games that they play. So working in Discord channels like Discord channels is, is quite easy for them. But how many of us as teachers actually have the time to spend hours and hours and hours working on these Discord channels or these new tech or these new marketing and communication channels so that we can actually give them any uh, additional advantage that that they don't know. And I've just listed Discord here, but there are hundreds of others, Snapchat, TikTok, um, and I'm sure you can name a few of them in the chat as well. Perhaps there are a few names that we haven't heard. And some of the challenges I've faced is how do I integrate these new channels into my class? Because when we've written the curriculum, it's how to set up Facebook, how to set up Instagram, how to um, update the SEO, etc., on a website. But we have nothing about setting up a Discord channel. We have nothing about setting up a Telegram channel. We have nothing about setting um, on 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 creating content or creating a strategy for for TikTok. These are all things that we've got to do additionally in class because it is, um, as you know, curriculums are quite slow to change. And to try and put in a theory behind TikTok algorithms or TikTok strategy. Um, doesn't take six months, doesn't take six months to do. So we've got to try and find a balance between incorporating this new technology and media into a structured curriculum. So when ChatGPT came out early last, uh, early last year, I had to adapt our curriculum by maintaining all of the current activities we had, but put a layer of 
chat GPT, chat GPT on it so that when my students come out of the class, they are actually useful. Because if you've come out of your university like ours and you don't know what how to write prompts in ChatGPT, who is going to pay you as a young um, digital marketer? But it doesn't mean that we have to throw the baby out of the bathwater. One of the ways that we've sort of bridged this gap between all of this new te technology and the fast pace that this that these new top technologies are coming into the market and some of them also fizzling out quite quickly is by focusing on the foundational aspects. So customer journey and my client, I talk about it ad infinitum, the sales funnel and consumer psychology. These fundamentals are still um, very important and it's the way that we can bridge the gap between this new technology where we've got fundamentals that we can teach our students. Now, the theme obviously was the challenge of more knowledgeable students. So how do we deal with it? So one of the ways I found is to acknowledge to the students that I don't know everything or that we don't know everything. And there are two points here. One is that it is impossible to be a specialist in all media anyway. And secondly, we are not able to be specialized in any of these new media unless you are purely taking a course on Discord and you've got a PhD in Discord, which is impossible because it probably hasn't been a long, uh, ar uh, around long enough for us, for anyone to get their masters and PhDs in, in Discord. So how do we give it a level of rigor? Um, it's, it's not possible. This will be happening in the next in the next couple of years. So it's good to make sure students know that. The second aspect is navigating the uncertainty of which of these new technologies are actually going to be useful for the job market? Are we setting up students to, um, uh, do we need to just teach them traditional media, Instagram, Facebook, etc.? And how do we choose which one of these new technologies is going to be most relevant for them? So what I've done to balance this in my class is where I've got a lack of knowledge, we bring in subject matter experts. I get students to do their own research. We do trial and error um, and we try and look at and ask them about future employment relevance. So we do a lot of research in terms of what are customers looking for on their job posts. So one of the ways I do this in class is by leveraging student expertise when I don't have it. So I use students as subject matter ex as subject matter experts. We've got some students who are who've got um, had a million hits on one of their TikTok channels. So I'm not going to talk to them about how to go viral on <laughs> TikTok if I've got a thousand views in a video. So we encourage them to share their knowledge. This peer-to-peer -peer learning is important as well. Once we've explained to them that we don't know everything, we are here to learn together and show us what you can do. It gives a feeling of empowerment as well. So we do a flipped classroom approach where I ask a student in advance to write a lecture on and prepare a lecture on the particular subject that they're on. And it is wonderful, better than I could have written. So I would encourage you to get your students to, to do a lecture on, on one of these subjects that they love. And then uh, I like General George Patton, his leadership style, where, and I just ask them to get it done. So if this is something that you want to do, get us over that, get us over that hump. Uh, I hope that's, 10 minutes or under 10 minutes, but I just wanted to bring some of those points across to you in terms of how I've dealt with very smart students looking at me askance in the class um, when I'm talking about all of these new technologies. And luckily, there are so many of them that I am often just five minutes ahead of them. And typically, that's all you need to be is five minutes ahead of your students and guide them or ask ask them to give their give their input. So thank you so much, uh, Phil, for the opportunity. And I look forward to if there are any ideas, please um, do put it in the comments and I'd love to read them. Thank you so much. We do have um, three minutes for a quick question. Um, and if it's OK, I'm going to ask it. But there are lots of questions in the Q&A. And I've just popped another question in the Q&A um, in response to, to Nicholas earlier, just asking if you've been in this situation. But one question I have for you, Nicholas, is. I know that when people and I think the generative AI kind of whirlwind has brought this out in so many people. 
they have had so much anxiety, stress, sleepless nights, worrying about what would happen when they confess to students that they don't know as much as they would like to know about a technology. When when you've said this to your students, what was the response? I generally set it up in a way not to say I am a, a troglodyte when it comes to new new media, but I say it. I ask them in beginning of the one of these courses is to ask them to go and find how many different channels are there? How many different media platforms are there? And they come to me with a, a huge list. Then I ask them to go and research and talk about one of these channels. So what I do is I just show them the vast expanse, first of all, the universe of media that's out there. And I tell them, I have a generalist understanding of all of these. I'm a specialist in these three channels, but the rest of them, we're gonna have to find it out by ourselves. Um, and by getting them to research it and present in class, it helps me because none of these channels are really that different from each other. I mean, it's it's either text, video, or, uh, or, or audio. So there's not terribly much, you know, it's not really that complicated, but there are just so many of them. And I tell them, you know, Facebook was an overnight success in 10 years. This was an overnight success in 10 years. It does take a while for these technologies to get there. And, um, yeah, it, it is tough because obviously everyone wants to be educated at a very high level. Everyone's got very high expectations and you've almost got to say self-study, continuous learning. I tell them about what was around when I was studying and how I had to learn these things. So it's up to you now to to um, I'm passing the torch on to you to figure out <laughs> what's going on. So it's um, I, I haven't had any negative um, negative um comments uh, to my face. I think it's great. I think it's really good and involving students in that and encouraging students to investigate and and and, and finding out together, I think is such a valuable way to, to do this. And what better learning kind of approach is there really? It, it's just fantastic. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. So thank you so much, Nicholas. Um, it's really great to have you back. Um, we have run to time, unfortunately, um, so we will have to move on to the next speaker. But if you could maybe take a look at some of the questions in the chat, that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, if anyone does have any other questions for Nicholas, please stick it in the Q&A uh, so Nicholas can find it. Uh, and if you're looking through the questions uh, and you like one that hasn't been answered, can you just give it a thumbs up and then we can identify ones that we need to, to focus on? That would really help us out. So thank you so much. Thanks, Nicholas.